Hello everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Thanks for joining us here on YouTube. We're recording this video live like we do every Monday. Be sure to check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for everything Royal Caribbean related. And uh, today we're talking about some pieces of cruise advice that I think are totally overrated. Yeah, there's a lot of great advice out there. We share a ton here on YouTube over at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. But you know what? Not all of it is like totally something you definitely need to follow. So we, I went over a lot of different advice. I scoured some blog posts, message board comments, heck, even some of the comments here on YouTube to find a couple things that I think you can totally ignore if you ask me. Number one, skipping independent or third-party shore excursions, right? Sometimes you'll hear from people who are like, hey, if you're gonna book a shore excursion, always book it with Royal Caribbean or the cruise line, whatever you're using, right? And my advice is no, that's not a great idea. The reason why I don't think booking excursions purely with the cruise line or only with the cruise line is the way to go is because you're limiting yourself. Yes, there are some advantages to booking with the cruise line. I freely admit that. But at the same time, the booking through third parties offers you so many more choices, oftentimes at much better prices. Not always the case. And I think when any port you're visiting, you should always consider not just the cruise line. You should look at the cruise line options, but you should also look at third party choices as well. Those are always good ideas. So don't limit yourself to just the cruise line or just the third party excursions. Look at them both, see which one works best for you, weigh the pros and cons, and pick the right one for you. The next piece of overrated cruise advice is arriving to the terminal later in the day. I hear this a lot of times actually from established cruisers, people that cruise a lot. They're like, you know what? Get to the cruise terminal, Sonny. <coughs> Excuse me, after you know, one o'clock or two o'clock or something like that. And the reason they give usually is because it's to avoid the crowds that can be there, right? They're like, well, it's gonna be crowded later, earlier in the day, show up later on and you'll beat the crowds, which you know what actually is, there is a little bit of truth to that. You will beat the crowds, but there's a couple things that are, there are two major problems with that piece of advice. Number one, if you arrive early, you will still beat the crowds. There is a peak time to crowd people when most people arrive to the cruise terminal usually that's like between 11 30 and uh let's say one o'clock 1 30 or so wow a super chat already angela roman can you talk about stay a while option for disembarkation day angela that's not for royal caribbean uh i believe that might be for carnival um i'm not familiar with that choice so uh, i think that's a different cruise line i could be wrong but i'm not familiar with that but thank you for the super chat it's very kind of you um so yeah there's a, there's a rush later on. So what you want to do is arrive at the cruise ship early, not to mention by arriving later in the day, you are missing out on like all the fun activities on board. Like there's a lot of things going on in the embarkation, the first day of your cruise. And to arrive later on, you're missing out on, you know, by listening to this advice, you're probably missing out on, I don't know, three to four hours of time on board the ship. You could have started your vacation earlier. So my advice, get to the cruise terminal uh, around 11 a.m. or so. It doesn't be 11 a.m. sharp. I get to the cruise terminal at 10 a.m. Honestly, that's a little bit of overkill. But if you get there around 11, you will be among the first people to check in. You'll be among the first people to board, and you will still beat the crowds and lines anywhere else on the ship. You're good to go. The next bit, the next bit of overrated cruise advice, my parents are not going to like. If they're listening right now, I'm really sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> and this is one which is wear a seasick patch. There's a lot of people who swear by the, the patch. You ever seen them on a cruise ship? If you didn't, there's people with a little patch right behind their ear. It's it's available via prescription and it does actually work. This is not where I don't, I'm not discounting that it works or not. My thing about it is I don't think in a lot of cases you actually need to use it. There's a great analogy that I heard uh, someone give why you shouldn't use a seasick patch. It's kind of like saying, oh, you should take DayQuil even if you're not feeling sick, just in case you get a cold later on. It's like a preventative measure, um, which is kind of silly to, to think about that in that regard. So my advice is instead of wearing a seasick patch right before you get on the ship and thinking you're, you're, you're safe, bring with you the patch, bring with you Bonine or another or a homeopathic me uh, method of combating seasickness and take it if you start to feel nauseous. Don't assume you need it. Don't wear it every single time. That's really the bottom line here because number one, there are some side effects that go into it holy moly oh my gosh we just got the biggest super chat i have ever seen joe young right thanks for the continued awesome advice 
Holy moly! Dude! Wow! Golf clap all around here, guys. I, I, wow. Joe, that is amazingly generous of you, sir. Uh, you, sir, made my day. And thank you so I'm really glad that you're enjoying this. Um, how do you do super chats? It's an option right below your chat. It looks like a little dollar sign. Uh, it's not, you don't have to do this, by the way. This is just something people do to like give back and to the blog, um, which I absolutely love, but it is not like required or like, I'm not sitting here with like a chart, like, Hey, you know, I need this amount of money. No, far from it. But really Joe, wow, dude, dude, that's amazing. Brother, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. I am so glad you're enjoying this. Uh, you've also completely, <laughs> I have no idea what was I talking about. Uh, the patch? Was that what we were on? Yeah. You don't need to wear the patch. I mean, you might need to wear the patch, but don't wear the patch immediately before you board the cruise and throughout the voyage, especially when it's quite clear you don't need it out there. So, yeah. Um, don't wear the season tickets patch. And the last one. Oh, boy. This one, this one hits, this one hits home for me because I am a geek. I know. Brace yourselves. I'm a little geeky. I know this kind of, it's going to come to a shock to you guys, but it's turning your phone off. Um, in the age of today, of 2019, you know, um, a lot of people will just turn your phones off and, and just, you know, not use them at all or put them in the safe. Right. And I get it. You don't want to, the rationale is, oh, you don't want to, uh, incur, you know, roaming fees and things of that nature, but turning your phone off really limits you in today's day and age. First and foremost, a lot of people use their phones as cameras. So you definitely want to be able to use that. Number two, you can download games you can play on there. Uh, you may have some movies downloaded, your favorite music. So what you want to do instead is not turn your phone off or, or put it away for the rest of the cruise. Put your phone in airplane mode. By putting it into airplane mode, which is really easy to do, it will disable your phone's connection to the cellular networks, which is where the root of the... Um, of all those roaming charges and crazy fees can can occur. If your phone is in airplane mode for the duration of your cruise, you will not incur a dime extra charges, and you can still use the Wi-Fi on board the ship or any place you visit while in any port you're visiting. So the bottom line is, you absolutely don't want to turn it off completely. Keep it with you because again, I think there are you value to your phone beyond simply making phone calls or texting. We all know these days they are our our entertainment center. Uh, our, our ability, obviously you may have an internet package and for other reasons, you definitely want to do that. Fat Cat, $100 super chat equals super Schatzberg. There you go, brother. So there you go. There's a bit of piece of overrated cruise advice. I'm not saying there isn't val there isn't a rationale behind every single one of those we talked about, but I do believe that you don't need to follow them. I think you can safely sidestep the, those steps. And instead I gave you in each case, an alternative, a different means of which to it, to still attain, I think the same goal. Um, hopefully that, that helps you out there. And of course it is Monday and we're diving into our chat room right now to take some of your questions, uh, already off to an amazing start with two super chats out there. Uh, we had, uh, Joe Young with just an epic, holy moly, can't believe he did that super chat. And Angela Roman also with that super chat earlier. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Joe. You guys rock. Love that. Um, I Let's start answering your questions. Yasina writes, uh, can you please explain the Royal IQ app? I downloaded it, but I honestly have no idea what it is. The Royal IQ app, Yasina, is only available on certain ships, like Quantum Class ships. And there's, there used to be more ships, but there's less of it. It's the old Royal Caribbean app, Yasina. What that means is um, Royal Caribbean has developed a new app that is going to eventually replace Royal IQ. Royal IQ can only be used on board the ship. So if you download the Royal IQ app, you've seen it, there's literally nothing you can do with it right now. It's probably gonna, if you turn it on, all it's gonna say is, hey, please connect to the Royal Wi-Fi and then continue. Um, if you're on a ship that uses Royal IQ, like um, Anthem of the Seas is an example, once you're on board the ship, you can connect to it and it gives you some options that you can uh, use. There's some extra things that cost extra with that app. Um, but again, it's only for some older ships. Joe Young says the new app is awesome. Dude, I agree. I love the new app. Uh, Christine, hurricane and shortened cruises delayed embarkation. Um, Christine, so far there's only been three sailings that have been directly affected because of Tropical Storm Dorian. We have those, they're actually Harmony of the Seas, Allure of the Seas, and Oasis of the Seas. They basically had their itineraries changed. And we have the details of that at royalcommandblog.com. Um, as of today, as of right now with this live video, there is no other changes to report. Micah with the super chat. Micah is going on champion season two days. So excited. Thanks for preparing me for my very first cruise. Micah, 
Thank you for the super chat, and brother, you're going to love that cruise. It's been an awesome time on there. There is nothing better than getting ready. And you know what? First of all, there's nothing better than your first cruise, but the fact you've already got all this knowledge, dude, you're going to go in there, and I I, prom I, 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 don't, I can't promise you, but I really think you're going to get on board that ship, and you're not going to feel like, oh gosh, I'm lost, I have no idea what's going on. I think all the information that you've been garnering here is going to help. Um, Teresa Ramos, does Air to Sea program useful? 180 days Rhapsody. Teresa, uh, Air to Sea program is Royal Caribbean's airfare purchasing. You can use it for any cruise, where you basically go through Royal Caribbean to purchase your airfare. Uh, the primary benefit of doing so, going through Air to Sea, is essentially Royal Caribbean, it's kind of like having like a travel agent. They're, they're like standing in your corner. If there's any issues with your flight or your cruise, Royal Caribbean then acts on your behalf to take advantage of that. The thing is, for domestic airfare here in the U.S., I don't think it's really worth it. I think it's really the value of air to sea is primarily, or most noticed, I think, with international airfare, because you have a little more flexibility with some of those flights. So uh, when it comes to air to sea, if you're looking at like, maybe a cruise to Europe, uh, or you, I don't know where you live, Teresa, maybe you live in Europe and you're coming to the U.S., if you're doing international airfare, there's some value to look at. it. There is an extra fee associated with those flights, so that's why it's kind of a downer on that. But um it, it, it's one of those answers where I hate to say it, it depends. Real Dog Gamer 123, any tips on going on Harmony of the Seas next year? We have a lot of great videos um, on Harmony of the Seas here on our YouTube channel. Uh, that's very self serving, but it's true, including our top 10 secrets of Harmony of the Seas. Um, on there, I would tell you uh, number one, listen to some of the tips we just shared earlier in this broadcast. Uh, make sure you're flying into your, if you're flying into your cruise port, get in at least a day ahead of time. Number two, get to the cruise terminal early. Get there around you know 11 a.m. or so. Beat the crowds on there. Read a past cruise compass. That's really one of the best tips I can give you because it's that you know the saying that you don't know what you don't know. Well, this is very true of Harmony of the Seas. The cruise compass is the is the newspaper they distribute on board the ship. Read a past one because it's going to give you a pretty good idea of what to expect on your sailing. And of course, I know what your next question is. Okay, Matt. Where do I find a past cruise compass for Harmony of the Seas or any Royal Caribbean ship? We have an archive of them at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Lightbro, see, that's who just got off Harmony. Lightbro, what was your favorite thing of Harmony of the Seas? Uh, Tess Hardy finally made it to a live session. I've been watching all your videos prepare for my first Royal Caribbean cruise. Have I ever done a cruise in Australia or the South Pacific? I have not. Uh, I live here in the U.S., so I haven't uh, been able to make it out to the South Pacific. I would love, love, love to check it out one day. Uh, are there any Chinese-speaking staff on board? There may be, yes. Um, Royal Caribbean's crew is made of international uh, crew members from all over the world, obviously. Um, you'll have crew members from China, the Philippines, Brazil, uh, the United States, Canada, the UK. I mean, it will run the gamut. Obviously, it depends on the ship, so I can't tell you definitively this ship has these people, this ship has these people. But you know what? China's a pretty big country. I think you got a pretty good chance of finding some crew members from there. And there's definitely a lot of Asian crew members. They might not be exactly from China. Sometimes they're from other countries, Thailand, the Philippines. But there are, I have definitely seen some from China as well. Whoa, Julie Hall with a super chat of her own. Julie, thank you so much. Julie Wright, thanks for all the great advice and entertainment. Smiley face. Well, Julie, smiley face right back at you. Thank you so much for the super chat. That is so kind. Justin Van Pelt, any Oasis of the Seas tips? Justin, before I get, um, I'm gonna, I want to answer your question, but when are you going on Oasis of the Seas? Because um, Oasis is going to be undergoing a major refurbishment. So the answer I give you today may be different than the answer later this year or even next year. Uh, JC writes, so if we get to the port at 10 a.m., they'll be okay with that. Can we enter the terminal at that time? Cape Liberty. Yes, JC. So what? Well, here's the, let me paint the worst case scenario for you, JC. 10 a.m. terminal usually will open up, right? Unless there's some extenuating circumstances, it'll be opened up there. All right, Justin, you're going December 5th. Let me get back to you in a second, Justin. Um, 10 a.m., the cruise terminal opens up. They will allow you to start going through the security process and the check-in process. Now, the ship may not be ready for boarding yet, but they will board in the order, generally speaking, of first first to check-in, first to board. Obviously, they'll go in uh, reverse uh, uh, Crown and Anchor Society levels first, but here's the bottom line, JC. Yes, when you get to the terminal at 10 a.m., it's open, you'll be good to go, uh, and you'll be able to check in and at least get that whole process going. I mean, my, my thought also, JC, is if assuming you don't live like, you know, like within driving distance of the port, what else are you going to do? Sit in the hotel room and wait? You might as well wait in the cruise terminal, and then you'll be on the first board. So let me go back to Justin's question about Oasis of the Sea. She's going in December, which will be after the refurbishment. And Jace, uh, Justin, I want you to uh, check out our video that we've done here on YouTube. Uh, all about the changes coming to Oasis of the Seas. Because later this summer, or later this fall, however you want to look at it, 
Royal Caribbean is going to refurbish the ship. They're going to add a lot of new features. There'll be some dining choices on there, cinema entertainment, um, some new, new things to do on board the ship. Uh, water slides are being added there. So you want to do the water slides. You definitely want to check out the new barbecue restaurants. It'll be the first one of the in the fleet. It's called Portside Barbecue. Check that out. Uh, you definitely want to. There's a lot of cool changes coming to Oasis of the Seas. I'm actually going on Oasis of the Seas before you on uh, November 24th. I might be like the sailing right before you, and I'll have some good more details about that. You can follow along. Uh, Sunspot K, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for your helpful tips. You are very welcome, Sunspot. I'm really glad you guys are enjoying this. I mean, you know, I, we've been doing real. I've been doing RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com since 2010. So nine years, and my biggest fear is always that I'm doing this up and no one really cares, so I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Uh, Shane, any news on the amplification of Voyager of the Seas to what is being added? Yes, brother. We have a full list of what's being added at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Um, I can pull up the uh, the information as soon as it comes up there. Um, Voyager of the Seas. Um, they're adding, let's see here, they're adding the Perfect Storm water slides. Of course, you already have the Flow Rider, uh, Surf Simulator, Rock Climbing Wall, Mini Golf. Uh, they're going to be adding the laser tag, Adventure Ocean is going to be redesigned, the Teens area is going to be redesigned, the Vitality Spa and Fitness Center is going to be enhanced, and a total of 72 new rooms are going to be added to the ship. Again, the full details are waiting for you at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Uh, Fred McKinnon, why does Royal Caribbean not cruise out of Charleston, South Carolina? Good question, Fred. Now, I can't give you a definitive answer. I'm not part of the decision making there. But a lot of it has to do with supply and demand um, and where they can make the most money. Basically, Fred, Charleston is not a traditional cruise port in the sense of one that a lot of cruise lines go out of. There's a lot of reasons for that. Florida is closer to a lot of the destinations, right? I mean, if you cruise out of Florida, you're cutting the distance compared to South Carolina to get to the Bahamas, to get to the Eastern Caribbean, Western Caribbean, etc. So there's a reason why, geographically speaking, going out of Florida makes a whole lot more sense. Uh, going out of South Carolina, I mean, a lot of people that are live in the Southeast, in Georgia, in South Carolina, in any of the Carolinas, Alabama, Mississippi. I mean, it's easy enough to drive to Florida anyway. It's, it's within reason. Um, and so that makes a lot more logistical sense. And I think based on historical data, based on supply and demand, uh, I, that's part of the reason why Royal Caribbean does not sell to Charleston. Um, so, and also uh, Charleston's port is not conducive to some of the larger ships in Royal Caribbean's fleet. Um, Charleston always comes down to money. Hey, it's a business, right? I and mean, that's the thing you always have to remember about Royal Caribbean. It's, it's, it's a business there. Uh, Lisa, does Royal Caribbean have a Pez dispenser on the ship? You know, Lisa, I've never gotten this question before, and the answer is no. <laughs> uh, Courtney Scott, do you recommend using the lots outside of the terminal parking? You live in Florida, and we'll be driving almost two hours to Port Canaveral. We'll get into private parking options. You know what, Courtney? I, I live in Florida as well. No matter which port we're talking about, um, Courtney, I never park at the terminal. Or, sorry, <laughs> reverse that. I always park at the terminal. I never park off-site. The reason being is quite simply the yes, you can save a few dollars by parking off site, but I don't think parking off site at a private lot will save you that much money. And more importantly, the convenience of parking at the port is so important, especially when the cruise is over, you're tired, you're angry the cruise is over, and you just want to go home. You don't want to be waiting for a shuttle bus to bring you back to your, your car. You just want to hop in, get out there. So I think it's well worth it just to park at the port. Julie, do you recommend the zip line in Labadee? Julie, I've done the zip line in Labadee, and uh, it was really cool. Um, I, I think if you've never done it before, it's definitely worth doing once. It's a very fun experience. It was a lot more intense than I was expecting. That's the nice way of me saying it was kind of scary, but I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat. I mean, I'm just not, you know, that's not my style. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. Uh, Teresa, do you think Rogan will throw a sale for a Labor Day weekend for dinner and drink packages? Teresa, I fully expect there to be a Labor Day drink or cruise planner sale i don't know definitively teresa um what will be included there in, in the sale what things will be on sale and the other thing teresa is regardless of which cruise planner sale we're talking about the discount will vary from ship to ship selling to selling so you got to keep checking out um real dog will i go on spectrum and seas probably not anytime soon real dog because she's over in asia I, I really don't have a means of getting over there it's not very practical for me to get i mean there is a means i can go on an airplane but it's not very practical for me to go over there um how can you not speak English to a Royal Caribbean staff? If you speak a different language, they support a lot of languages that are there. Guest services can help you out. No question about it. Um, Odalise, what are the best, you say rides, I think you mean water slides, at Coco Key, Perfect Day Coco Key. I would tell you, 
Uh, I, I mean, they're all great. They're a lot of fun. I've done all the water slides at Perfect Day Koki. Daredevil's Peak uh, is the, the really tall slide. That's, amazing. That's my favorite one to go on. You've also got the, um, I think it's Slingshot. It's the Family Raft Slide. That was a lot of fun. Also, right next to the Family Raft Slide, there is a Tube Slide. I, I apologize for not knowing the names off the top of my head. Uh, those are really great. Those are my top three. And also, the Wave Pool is a lot of fun. Love that. Tess, are you able to upgrade your drink package once on board? Say I'm drinking more alcohol than expected. Yes, Tess, you can. Uh, just keep in mind, when it comes to upgrading drink packages, you can't upgrade a free drink package. So if you got like a soda package as part of your room or a giveaway from your travel agent, you cannot upgrade that. But if you bought the Royal Refreshment Package or the soda package, you want to upgrade that, yes, you can do that. Andrew Ford in the house. We did the slingshot four times on Saturday. Awesome, Andrew. Um, Andrew was on Navigator of the Seas, just went this past weekend. Two perfect day, Coco Key. Uh, Joe Wade in the house. All things being equal, which part of the Caribbean would you pick for a vacation? I mean, I love the Southern Caribbean, Joe. I think it's a really great place. Um, some of the most beautiful beaches out there. Hard to go wrong there. Spore Crazy, any idea where Odyssey of the Seas will be sailing from? Not from, no, but we do know for a fact um, Odyssey of the Seas, which is the next new Royal Caribbean ship that comes out next year, will be sailing Two destinations in Europe and North America. We just don't know from where yet. Um, Yankee, does uh, Royal Caribbean sell out of Shenzhen? I'm not sure exactly. I know ugh, Quantum of the Seas and, and Spectrum of the Seas both sell out of China. Uh, I don't remember the port because I know like they, I think they list like Beijing, but uh, Shanghai is one of them. Um, but I'm not sure exactly uh, of what the name of the port is. So I apologize for that. Uh, Jeanette Fuentes, love your videos going on Navigator these last this year. Uh, are the Shakespeare Johnny Rockets Express covered with the refreshing package? Yes, I believe they are because in that situation, the, the answer is yes, they are. Um, the difference is um, it, on other ships there you have to pay the cover charge to die in there, but since it's just a a la carte, I think you're good to go. AM was it was a four day cruise worth it. So if you've cruised before, if you cruise multiple times, I think a four day cruise is worth it. I think it's it, it's it's a it's a great little getaway. You know, it's better than no cruise at all. But if you're a new cruiser, if you're someone who's new to cruising and or new to Royal Caribbean, I don't recommend three or four night sailings. The reason being is they're so short. You're much better off in terms of your value and the total overall experience by going on a longer sailing. Kelly Watson has some overrated advice of her own. She, uh, she said, I received what the most overrated advice I received was being told lines would be miles long on ovation, never felt crowded, and short lines, if any. Absolutely. There's a lot of, Kelly, I'm glad you shared that. There is, a, unfortunately, a lot of misinformation out there. People see, you know, Ovation of the Seas or Symphony of the Seas, and they're like, oh, that shit must be super crowded, you know? And it's the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Same is true here. Royal Caribbean designs these ships to help spread out crowds, and it will not feel anything like that. Um, JD wants to know, have I ever been on Serenade of the Seas? I've not been on Serenade, but I have been on our sister ships, uh, Brilliance and Jewel of the Seas. Fabulous, fabulous ships. Julie Banks, you want to have Coco Key in February? When do you think the Over the Water Commanders will be able to reserve? That's a good question, Julie. I don't know. They're supposed to be done in, in December. Um, I'm not sure when they'll show up on the website, but I will definitely post it at royalcommandblog.com so you know the second you can start booking it. Don Johnson Baugh is here. Welcome, Don, from somewhere in South Florida, I believe. Welcome, Don. Um, Kevin, have you been on Explore the Seas? Yes, I went on Explore the Seas. My first World Cup cruise was on Explore the Seas out of Bayonne, New Jersey, and I just went on Explore the Seas this past uh, summer, 2018 summer, uh, to Alaska. Great ship. And she's getting a major refurbishment. Oh, we got another super chat. Chris Dunn with the super chat. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. Mariner uh, for Halloween. Activities to expect on board. Good question, Chris. There's going to be a lot of activities on board the ship. For Halloween, I'm assuming that's what you're asking, right? There's going to be a Halloween costume contest. There's going to be trick-or-treating on board. I'm sure there's going to be some other special Halloween decorations on board. Um, here's what you want to do, actually. Look for Halloween cruise compasses from last year. It's going to give you a pretty good idea of what to expect. Um, Adventurecraft, what restaurants would you recommend on Explorer of the Seas? Chops Grill is hard to go wrong with. Love Chops Grill. Um, Scott, is it worth going on alert before the refurbishment? Absolutely, Scott. A, a, there is no such thing as a bad reason to go on a cruise. Or, or I know what you're wondering. You know, is it going to be run down? Is, are you missing out? Certainly, there's some upgrades coming to the ship. But I think you'll still have a great time on alert of the seas in her current form. Uh, MJ, Matt, when do they begin selling May 2021 sailings? Is there a pattern? Yes, there is a pattern, MJ. Good question. They will begin usually um, offering the first batch 
uh, later this fall, let's say November time frame, and the rest in the spring of next year. Um, let's see here. Uh, Julie's going on Explorer this season in November. Nice. Uh, Mail GTV, I encourage everyone to cruise during December. We went on our honeymoon in December, and it was already decorated for Christmas, and it was great. Um, Adelfon, if you're catching a cruise from Australia, would you need to change your currency to U.S. dollars? Not necessarily. The official currency, Royal Caribbean does all its currencies with U.S. dollars on board, uh, but they'll gladly take your Australian dollars. Um, I don't think you'll have any issues there in terms of them accepting it. Trust me, Royal Caribbean will take any money you want to give them. Now, that being said, that being said, their exchange rate may not be wonderful. So if you're concerned about exchange rate or maximizing that, um, especially if you're bringing cash for like the casino, you may want to consider exchanging it ahead of time because you'll probably get a better rate. But it's not going to be like outrageous. It's not going to be like a you know, loan shark terrible rate. Uh, Tyson, how long should we expect the main dining room to take for dinner, Harmony of the Seas? Usually, it's in the ballpark of about 60 to 90 minutes. I would say that's the reasonable expectation, and a lot closer to 60 than 90. Uh, Patty, celebrate my birthday on Mariner of the Seas. My kids want to take get me a cake. Um, who do we ask? You can ask the staff on board the ship. Uh, your head waiter can definitely coordinate that for you. Scott wants to know, uh, Scott Kinsewitz? 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 Scott is here. Uh, what does the key do? The key is kind of a guest VIP program. It allows guests to uh, buy into certain upgrades, enhancements, and perks. It's kind of like a. It's kind of like Scott. You ever gone to the airport and they're like, uh, Scott, would you like to um, uh, upgrade to first class today? And then you're kind of like, oh yeah. You, know, you think to yourself, well, I don't really need to upgrade there, but it's kind of nice to have it. That's essentially what it gets you. Um, it gets you complimentary internet, or you pay for it. It's included with it. Um, some uh, priority uh, embarkation and boarding. Um, and some other benefits as well that's there. We have a full review of it here on our YouTube channel as well. Odalis with the Super Chat! Woo! Odalis, thank you so much! Uh, Odalis writes, I'm pronouncing your name correctly now, uh, thank you so much for your advice. My family and I are excited to be going on our first Royal Caribbean cruise next year. Which ship are you going on, Odalis? Awesome! Uh, Gerald Myrick, first time on Royal Caribbean Mariner of the Seas, going December 9th. Been on three cruises with Carnival. Any tips on what to expect between the two cruise lines? You know, I think, I haven't been on Carnival, so full disclosure, but I will tell you, I firmly believe there's a lot more uh, that Carnival and Royal Caribbean have in common than they don't have in common. Now, it also depends, Gerald, on which ships you're talking about. I know you're on a Mariner of the Seas, but I have no idea what kind of Carnival ships you went on. I mean, if you went on a Fantasy Class ship on Carnival, you're going to see a vastly different experience than if you were on a Sunshine Class, is that a thing? Some of their newer ships in Carnival. Um, but I think you're going to find a lot of... Uh, a lot of carryover, a lot of more similarities and differences. Uh, Fortnite, thank you. Congrats on 50,000. Yeah, we hit, I, I forgot, I totally forgot to mention this, but earlier this week we hit 50,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Uh, this channel has been, guys, like, when we started, at the beginning of 2019, I had, like, barely any subscribers. It was a very small channel, and we have come such a long way. So I got to thank a big thank you to all of you guys for your support. I mean, truly, um, it, it's it's been incredible. And I, I remember our first live broadcast here on YouTube. You know, we was first started out, and uh, and 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 uh, you know, it was it was very obviously not nearly as popular as it is now. But guys, it's all because of you. So thank you so much for being part of the fun. Uh, Gene McKee, I've been watching cruising videos. Makes it hard to wait till next year. I'll tell you something, Gene. First of all, you're in good company because I know that feeling so well when it comes to. You know, you, you you book that cruise and you get so excited and you're like, oh man, it's really far away from now. And you got that, you got to do something to keep it going, keep your keep yourself from feeling totally depressed because your cruise is too far away. But watching videos on here, I really think are a great deal. Jeff Wilson wants to know, will I get a better deal on next cruise before I get off my cruise? Uh, Jeff's question is, let me translate your question. Um, uh, Jeff wants to know, will you get a better deal by booking cruise on board the ship than not booking on board? By the way, Odalis, I am pronouncing their name correctly. And going on Oasis June 2020. You're going to love it. All right. So uh, do you get a better deal on the ship or off the ship? Here's the deal. No pun intended, Jeff. If you're sitting on the ship, okay, and you're saying, boy, this is a great time. We're having such a fun time. That guy, Matt, was totally right about all of this. Uh, let's book another cruise. If you go to next cruise, you will absolutely get free money from Royal Caribbean for booking on board. The price is the same whether you book the cruise on board versus at home. The difference is Royal Caribbean will give you, Jeff, extra onboard credit for booking it on board the ship. But... What I don't want you to do, Jeff, is sit here in late August 2019 and say to yourself, okay, self, uh, we got a cruise coming up in December or later or whatever, and I'm going to wait to book a sailing I know I want to book until we get on board the ship. 
That would be a mistake, Jeff. And the reason is because my fear would be that the price would go up between today and when you get on board that ship and that would neg that would negate any ex the savings you get with that extra onboard credit. Does that make sense? So if you know you want to book a cruise now, book it now. Lock in that price. But if you're on board the ship and the moment strikes you and you decide it would be great to do another cruise, that's okay. Then do it on board. Uh, Ryan Perry is on my favorite ship right now, Harmony of the Seas. Am I jealous? <coughs> yes. Uh, next. Uh, I'm Steve. Hello, Steve. When do itineraries for Alaska 21, 2021 come out? The first set of itinerary, we don't know exactly, Nax, but based on previous release schedules, I expect the first batch of new sailings to be released probably later this fall. Let's say November time frame or so. Of course, when I know more information, I'll post it at royalcoreanblog.com. Juan Catalina in the house. Welcome. By the way, I know a lot of people are new here. My name is Matt. I'm from royalcoreanblog.com. If you're new here, guys, type new. This is your first live broadcast. Like, you may have seen my other videos on the channel. But if, if you've never been on our live broadcast, type new in capital letters because I can't wait to welcome everyone. Uh, Intrepid Tech, welcome. Sydney, welcome. Stan, welcome. Cyril, welcome. Uh, James is not new. Glad to see you back here, buddy. JC, I was going to do just that. Wait till our cruise on Anthem next month, but uh, is that a bad idea? But that is a bad idea and we booked Oasis through MEI Travel. Awesome. And don't forget, if you book a cruise through next cruise, you can still use a travel agent. Oh, Dallas, thank you for your thank, welcome. Salma, welcome. Nax, thank you. AKA okay, Steve, welcome. Uh, oh my gosh, so many new people here. B Stad from Texas. Howdy, partner. Judy Cole, welcome. Gerald, welcome. Uh, I can't even keep up, guys. And Juan, Shay, Patty, Tess, Ashley, Nix, uh, uh, Ann, Brian Rogers, Carol, and Paul, Tim. Uh, guys, I'm so glad. Holy, Captain Obvious is on Independence right now? I'm jealous again. I, I love when people join me on board a ship, on board a Royal Caribbean ship, but it makes me so jealous because I'm at home and you guys are all on board a ship. But uh, theoretically, I'm going on a cruise this weekend. I say theoretically because I am booked on a cruise. I'm booked on Mariner of the Seas for uh, this weekend, going on Friday on Mariner. Quick three-night sailing. But of course, with Tropical Storm Dorian, I'm not sure what's going to happen there. But fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed we're going to be on board uh, Mariner of the Seas. And you know what? We should probably do a live broadcast. What do you guys think? Should I do one from on board the ship? Uh, a, a YouTube live there? Roz writes, I'm really old. Well, Roz, I'm really glad you're here. All right, back to your questions, guys. Jerry Nash going on our first cruise December. Uh, on Navigator, what is something we must do in NASA? Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, if you want to go to the beach, hard to go wrong there. Uh, you got the British Colonial Hilton. That's a great idea. It's not booked through Royal Caribbean. You book it just uh, like a different third-party website. Basically, it's a resort. The British Colonial Hilton is the name of it. And you get a day pass there. It's very economical uh, to go there. If you're looking for a money ain't an object, place, beach experience, uh, Atlantis Resort is really nice for you as well. And if you're looking for something different, you're like, you know what, man, I'm not really a beach guy or we don't want to go to the beach or whatever. And then my other advice to you would be to check out Jetline Simulations. It is a Boeing 737 simulator and you get to actually fly a Boeing 737 virtually. It's really, really cool. Francis from Singapore, welcome. Um, Chad, I'll be on Mariner this weekend too. Hoping Sunday is still a perfect day. Chad, I hope I get to see you on board. By the way, Chad, if you see me on board the ship, please say hello. Um, I, I don't know. I don't even, I have no idea, Chad, what's going to go happen. But, you know, you know the old song? You guys remember the old song, K sera, sera? K sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. K sera, sera. That's kind of how I'm dealing with this. I mean, it's not, it's not, neither you nor I, Chad, have anything we can do to influence anything. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Doug Miller says, if I, ha if I have the regular drink package and decide I want the unlimited after I'm already on board, will they let me upgrade? Yes, Doug. If you paid for the Royal Refreshment package or the uh, soda package, yes, you can upgrade once on board. My advice, though, is it's far easier and simpler to simply book what you want now, but I understand. You're not sure yet. It's That's not a bad idea. Um, Jody, have you ever been on an excursion in St. Kitts or St. Lucia? Yes, St. Lucia... I went to, we, we really struck out in St. Lucia. We walked, our plan was to walk off the ship, find a taxi driver and do something. And we ended up, unfortunately, a lot of the options were very expensive. I should have, I should have booked something in advance. So we ended up going to a, some, some taxi driver brought us to a beach nearby, which was fine. Nothing special. 
and I got swindled by the nicest man in St. Lucia. Quick story here. We went to this beach. This guy dry, comes up in a boat selling drinks and coconut. There's no other place to get alcohol on the beach, so we had no choice. But he was selling us, you know, beers and stuff for, like, American prices. We got back to the port, and it was, like, a fraction of that. So we're like, oh, that guy swindled us. But he was so nice. Uh, in St. Lucia, uh, that was in St. Saint Lucia, sorry. In St. Kitts, um, I've been there twice. We did something that was really cool, a little different. They have actually a train you can take. This is bookable through Royal Caribbean. There's a train tour of the countryside of St. Kitts. Really neat. You might want to try that out. Uh, Gene, nice singing there. My singing is terrible. I know that, but I, I kind of had to go with it. Uh, Jason says, my wife said right before you broke into song, he's not going to sing, is he? <laughs> uh, Scott, when did you go on your first cruise and what ship was it? My very first cruise was the Disney Wonder uh, to the Bahamas many, many years ago. My first Royal Caribbean cruise was Explorer of the Seas uh, to, the, to the Eastern Caribbean. Um... Let's see here. Brett, hope you don't get canceled, but if you do, we'll be a great follow-up to the Trip Insurance Podcast. That's true. Uh, and Brett's referring to my sailing uh, this coming weekend. I mean, it's one of those things that's out of your hand. Uh, Nick, can you still have fun at Coco Key without the water park package? Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. There are so many great things to do at Perfect Day at Coco Key, even if you don't step foot in that water park. You have the Oasis Lagoon Freshwater Pool, the largest freshwater pool in the Caribbean. You've also got uh, Chill Island. You've got beach. You've got vo there's volleyball courts. Um... There's a ton of fun stuff to do without the water park there. I can tell you from first-hand experience, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Kevin, Explorer versus Navigator. Just got off Navigator and loved it. I booked Explorer the second I got off. Explorer, so it depends, Kevin, when you're going on Explorer. Navigator got some major upgrades, which really took it to another level. Like right now, Kevin, Explorer does not have water slides. Explorer does not have bamboo room or playmakers or an escape room or things of that nature. So it's definitely like a step below Navigator right now. But... But um, she is due for an upgrade, and we're not sure what she's getting. But it's coming, I believe, next year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but there's no details yet on what's going on there. So, um, have I ever stayed in Star Class? Preston wants to know. I actually have not. I've done Sky. I've done Sky Class. I've done C Class, but never have I done um, Star Class yet. I'm looking for a reasonable star class is uh is a sweet option on royal Caribbean's oasis class ships and, and quantum class ships i should add that is their top 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 elite sweet class in a lot of cases it's the price is like comparable to a new car an american car but a new car nonetheless and that's a lot of money and so i can't I haven't been able to justify booking it billy from grooshabit.com just got here and my is this a topic i have opinions on we talked about them earlier buddy but if you want to share your favorite overrated bits of cruise advice i'd love to hear them on there <laughs> jblock only ken jarvis says that it's very expensive but it's sometimes you get some actually reasonable deals on star class swordfish uh can you do a video on the eastern caribbean also love you ever tried the beach bungalows at coco key love your videos i have done the beach bungalows i didn't want a coco key before his perfect day a couple of years ago on anthem of the seas for spring break it's really cool the great thing about the beach bungalows is it's a very very similar experience to the um to the uh what's it called uh to the to the cabanas and for a lot less money so it's a great choice there in terms of the eastern caribbean let me know what ports you're going to because obviously there's a lot of eastern caribbean ports uh mitchy boy slightly different question if you apply to for a job at royal caribbean do you have any advice for applicants i have no idea buddy i don't work for royal caribbean my advice is uh have a really good resume i i, I honestly don't know i wish i gave you more advice there uh happy monday germain am i still going on my cruise this week i'm hoping so um, I have a cruise that leaves on Friday, Mariner of the Seas. Billy from CruiseAbbott.com has a cruise leaving, uh, not Royal Caribbean. Can you believe that? What's up with that? He's going on a cruise on, I think his leaves on Sunday or something like that. Um, yeah, but fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I mean, the nature of the beast with this time of year is, look, even I know what the weather is coming, I mean, there's only so much, There's, I have no control over the weather, nobody's control over the weather, so we'll see what happens, and I'm hoping for the best. Uh, Graham, are there buffalo wings on Harmony of the Seas? Their room service definitely has buffalo wings, yes. Um, there is no Playmakers, uh, which is the premier venue for buffalo wings on board Royal Caribbean ships. It is on Symphony of the Seas. But for you, my friend, your best bet is going to be room service, which would cost you $7.99 or $7.95 for unlimited, as many, it's per order. So you tell them you want like 20 20 probably you know probably three or four orders of buffalo wings and you're good to go 
Uh, Captain Sable, main dining room. Love the name. Have you ever met Super Mario? Yes, I met him on Navigator of the Seas um, earlier this year. Great, great guy. Very, very nice. Uh, one question would I ask him? Well, I just asked him how... I mean, I asked him probably the question I get asked a lot too, which is how do you manage to go on so many cruises and what was your favorite things to do on there? And, you know, he... He had, he's a great storyteller, Super Mario. Super Mario, if you don't know who Super Mario is, he is the man who has cruised the most with Royal Caribbean. I think he's at some, a crazy amount of thousands of nights. I forget what it is, like 6,000 nights, something like that. It's it's unbelievable, the amount of nights. I mean, he, he just basically lives on a cruise ship. He gets off the ship every now and then, but he just goes live for months at a time on a given ship. Nikki Nichols said, how is Rhapsody? Rhapsody's a great ship. Went on her for spring break a couple of years ago, uh, 2018. The key with Rhapsody and some of the older, smaller Royal Caribbean ships is really, it's not that, you know, when you ask how is Rhapsody, it's a matter of expectations. What are you looking for in your cruise ship? What is, you know, are you do you need a ship that has water slides or a full Broadway show or a Royal Promenade, you know, or zip line? If you do, well, Rhapsody is not for you. But if you're cool with a classic cruising experience, some great dining options on board, uh, fabulous pool deck, some great nightly entertainment, Rhapsody is great for that. It's just a matter of, you know, again, expectations and managing them. Uh, Gene says Super Mario just hit 8,000 points. Crazy. So Super Mario has hit 8,000 points of Crown and Anchor. Guys, I'm at 260. 260. So here's me. Here's Super Mario. <laughs> Will, how do I convince my parents to go on a New Year's cruise? Buddy, you got to tell them it's a family vacation. Say, look, you know what, guys? Uh, I'm getting a little older now. I want family vacation to still be a thing. But you know what? We don't need to be, like, you know, at, joined at the hip to do a family vacation. Cruising is perfect for that. Sell them on the family angle. Uh, Frank wants to know, should I bring two-way radios like walkie-talkies? Absolutely not, Frankie. Two reasons for that, Frank. Number one, they're annoying to other guests. Number two, they don't work very well because of interference from the ship systems and a lot of the metal all around the ship. Um, enjoy life journey. How many people can do the escape room? I think it's like 14 or 16. I forget the exact number, but it's around that number. Uh, Project Luke, can kids have breakfast at the Solarium Bistro? Absolutely, yes. Um, Kevin, do I have any experience with MSC? I do not. Um, Billy from CruiseHabit.com has been on MSC. He still hasn't written his last day live blog from there, but he has been there. Uh, Gene is at seven points until your next cruise. There you go. Uh, do they offer funnel cakes in the water park at Coco Key? Nikkei wants to know. Uh, they do offer funnel cakes... I think they're at Chill Grill, not at Snack Shack. But you can easily walk in and out of there. So it's easy to get one. Um, Brandon, have you ever been on Liberty this season? If so, would you recommend it for a few kids in their early 20s? I've been on, on her sister ship's Freedom and Independence of the Seas. Absolutely. For kids in their 20s, yes. I mean, there's it, there's more to do on some of the larger, newer ships. But Freedom is a big ship. I mean, that's 4,000 plus passengers. Uh, great pool deck. I think you'll like it. So the answer to my question is yes. Michelle Birnbaum says, Sherry from Cruise Tips TV has been on MSC. Sherry's been everywhere. Sherry is like the preeminent expert on everything. So I'm not surprised to hear that. But also check out Sherry's videos as well. Um, Cruise Tips TV and uh, CruiseHabit.com. Um, Swordfish, any must suggested to, to do's in San Juan and St. Thomas? San Juan, don't book any excursions. Walk off the ship in Old San Juan. Explore on your own. It's a great city, to, easy to walk around. St. Thomas, go to Megan's Bay. Um, Jane, I've not been on Radiance of the Seas, but I have been on her sister ship's Brilliance. And Jewel, fabulous class ships. You'll love it. JC, you think Oasis will come to New Jersey every year or it's a one-time thing? It's a one-time thing. I mean, one-time thing right now. I think... Wait, shouldn't we know this already? Uh, for 2020, I'm trying to figure... You may, maybe we'll see this like, you know, some of the... Like when Allure comes back. But um, anyway, no, it's more of a one-off than a... It's not coming back like next... Every season, if that makes sense. Uh, any restriction on bringing certain brands of milk for my two-year-old? We're going on a family cruise during Christmas this year. No. Actually, for 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 children, infants, who need, you know, special beverages, non-alcoholic beverages, obviously, uh, there is, you're, you're totally cool. If it's for medical reasons, no problem at all. Um, Ash wants to know, how do you plan on cruising with different ports of embarkation, disembarkation? Is it too costly for airfare since it's different airports? How do you deal with this type of cruise? Oh, so Ash, are you talking about a cruise that starts in one port and ends in another one, like a, like a repositioning cruise? Um, it really depends, Ash. I mean, the answer to your question is sometimes, yes, it can be cost prohibitive to take a repositioning cruise because while the cruise itself may be relatively inexpensive, the price of airfare to get to and from each of the different airports may make it unreasonable. Um, 
it, it's one of those questions where it depends. Um, I would tell you that you could certainly play a game with it, and it's, it's worth looking into. It's not always the case, but I do believe that it requires you to do your homework with the airfare. Um, in a lot of cases, it really helps you a lot if you live close enough to one of the ports, like either the embarkation port or the disembarkation port, where you could drive to one or the other. As an example, I live in Florida, so a repositioning cruise from Florida to Europe, I could drive to the port, right? And then obviously I have to fly back from Europe. Um, if you can do that, that helps a lot. That may not be in the cards for you. In which case, you'll probably have to play the game of how much is airfare and how much, and a lot of times these repositioning cruises are very inexpensive, especially on a nightly basis, you know, per night basis, I should say. So you may end up being able to almost make a wash in that regard. Teresa, are the ocean view cabins on Rhapsody comfortable? I mean, comfortable is a relative term, it's subjective. I believe they are. Uh, Captain Sable, have you ever been on a themed cruise chartered on a Royal Caribbean? I have not. I have not. Uh, I've been on, all right, let me take that back one time. Um, it's not, it wasn't a chartered cruise. Well, here's the answer to your question. One time, Royal Caribbean invited me. Earlier this year, I was on Navigator of the Seas for a two-night shakedown cruise. So this was a cruise filled with just crew members. So it wasn't open to the public. And they were using it as a means of testing the ship out. She had just come from dry dock, having been refurbished, and they wanted to really run the system, see how well or not well it worked. So they invited a lot of crew members, uh, Royal Caribbean employees, to come and go on this sailing. And Royal Caribbean invited me to be part of it. So that's kind of a, I mean, it's a chartered cruise. It wasn't available to the public, but not like a, you know, I don't know, 80s rock band cruise or something like that. Uh, do I plan to do the escape room on Ovation? Absolutely. I love doing Trina. The escape room is one of my favorite activities on any Royal Caribbean ship. I do it all the time. Uh, Preston, what's my favorite specialty restaurant on any ship? Um, Sabor, Izumi, 150 Central Park. Those three are some of my favorites. Do I have a favorite Captain JC? Oh, yes. Uh, I, uh, Captain Ben is wonderful. I, I've sailed with him as well. But Captain Johnny. Captain Johnny is my go-to guy right there. Uh, Shane, can you leave yourself on the ship if you have to, if you do a back-to-back -back in the same cabin? Yes, absolutely, Shane. Yes. Um, Fat Cat, I stepped away for a little bit. Did you really get two? No, no, no. That's the same one, Fat Cat. It's just the, the bigger the Super Chat, the longer it stays up there. But, um, yeah, no, it's still there, So, which is awesome, by the way. Uh, does Izumi and Rhapsody have the teppanyaki option or is it sushi only, Teresa? Sushi, no, it's teppanyaki. Um, they do have some non-sushi options, some, uh, hot appetizers and whatnot, but they do not have the teppanyaki. Joseph, I've not done the mystery dinner on Serenade, but I've heard some really good things about the mystery dinner in general. I say give it a try. So, all right, guys, well, I got to run. Thank you so much for joining us here. It was a lot of fun. Uh, big shout out to all the guys and gals who shared with me the super chats. Thank you to all of you for hanging out with me here on YouTube. Uh, once again, thank you to everybody for, we, we hit 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube, which is an amazing number. Um, I told my daughter we hit that number and she was like, wow, are you a celebrity dad? I'm like, no, but I just, <laughs> no, there's, there's not a correlation between the two of them. But uh, anyway, I thought an eight year old would be impressed by that. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us here. We do this every Monday. So come join us here on Mondays. And like I said, if we go on this cruise on Mariner of the Seas this weekend, I want to do a live broadcast somewhere, somehow, from on board the ship. So look for that over here. Make sure you turn on your notifications for our channel so that way you don't miss out on any of the live broadcasts. Guys, until then, have a great rest of your week. Enjoy. Do something fun. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Good night, everybody.